Today is Thursday, June 29th. We have an update about the ongoing air quality issues in some parts of the U.S. as smoke spreads from the wildfires in Canada. Also, new estimates show the U.S. population is older than it's ever been, while people in South Korea just became a year or two younger. We'll explain. Plus, which company is now taking over the Bed Bath & Beyond name? The latest update about Madonna's condition after she was rushed to the hospital and an unexpected consequence from the rising popularity of pickleball. Those stories and even more news to know today, coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. More than 110 million Americans are now under some kind of heat alert from California to Florida. This heat wave has already made Texas among the hottest places on the planet this week, with several cities hitting or surpassing 110 degrees, plus high humidity that makes it feel even hotter. Emergency rooms have been packed with people getting treated for heat-related illnesses. In just the last few days, at least 13 heat-related deaths have been reported in Texas and one in Louisiana. And even more of the Southeast is expected to be blanketed in heat today. Separately, California is bracing for its first major heat wave of the year, Excessive heat watches are in effect for much of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys. And dry, hot, windy conditions are expected to make fires more likely in California, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah. And speaking of fires, smoke from Canadian wildfires has now reached as far as Spain and Portugal, about 4,000 miles away. But some of the worst effects from the thick wall of smoke are still right here in the U.S., Air quality alerts have been issued for about another 100 million Americans from the Midwest to the East Coast. Firefighters in Canada are now battling nearly 500 fires in what's officially being called Canada's worst wildfire season in history. And they're not expected to be extinguished until after summer ends. People traveling from California to Seattle on an Amtrak train dealt with a pretty big scare this week. But thankfully, everyone is expected to be okay. The train crashed into a Ventura County water truck that was apparently stopped on the track in Moore Park, about 50 miles northwest of Los Angeles. Several train cars derailed. Fifteen passengers had to be taken to the hospital, but the injuries are not considered too serious. The driver of the truck was taken to a trauma center, but is also expected to survive. Now the cause of the crash is under investigation. This week, President Biden kicked off a national campaign to sell the public on his economic record. But it could be a pretty hard sell since the most recent AP poll found just 34 percent of Americans approve of his handling of the economy. The president held his first major speech on what he calls Bidenomics, which he bills as pretty much the opposite of Reaganomics, which former President Ronald Reagan has become known for. While Reagan went for the trickle-down approach, Biden is promoting the idea of growing the economy from the bottom up, with a specific focus on the middle class. He talked up his administration's investments in infrastructure, rules to eliminate junk fees, efforts to boost American manufacturing, beef up the clean energy industry, and more. Plus, he spoke about his efforts to boost union membership and eliminate student debt, which he says will help more people find their way into a comfortable middle-class life. The White House has highlighted a lot of job growth while Biden has been in office and low unemployment. But his administration has also seen historic levels of inflation— And some economists still say a recession is possible as the Federal Reserve keeps raising interest rates. In response to Biden's speech, the Republican National Committee said, quote, hardworking Americans pay the price for failed Bidenomics, pointing out that savings, real wages and economic confidence are all on the decline. Even President Biden acknowledges there's some work to do to bring down inflation. But he says the country is on the right track. The U.S. population is now older than it's ever been. New estimates from the U.S. Census Bureau show the median American age is about 39 years old. And that's up from 35 in 2000 and 30 in 1980. Since then, birth rates have gone down and life expectancy has gone up. So older people just make up a larger share of the U.S. population. And that could be a problem for the workforce as more baby boomers start to retire. Worker shortages are expected to be especially dire in healthcare, which becomes even more crucial as we age. But all that said, the New York Times points out that the U.S. is still a younger country than its European peers, where the median age is 44. All 51 million people in South Korea just became a year or two younger. 
at least according to their government. A new law in the country scrapped the country's traditional age counting system. Before now, South Koreans were deemed a year old at birth. Then a year was added to everyone's age every January 1st. So that means if a South Korean baby was born on December 31st, they were considered two years old the very next day. But a few months ago, South Korea passed laws to just adopt the international standard, calculating from zero at birth. Though the old system will sort of still be used in some circumstances. For example, to calculate the legal age to smoke, drink alcohol, or join the military, the law will go based on the year no matter what. So for those purposes, two people who are born in January and December of the same year will be seen as the same age. More news is just ahead, but first, we want to tell you about our new merch now available to everyone. As in, the newsworthy shirts, tank tops, hoodies, kids' clothes, mugs, cell phone cases, notebooks, stickers, and more. They have our logo and a couple of our go-to lines like, you ready? Let's do this. And fast, fair, fun news in 10 minutes. And they come in a variety of colors and styles to choose from. This is an awesome way to support the show and hopefully help you feel even more a part of this amazing community of listeners. To celebrate the launch, you can get up to 35% off all the Newsworthy gear today and tomorrow only. So check it out by going to thenewsworthy.com slash merch, M-E-R-C-H, thenewsworthy.com slash merch. We've also included a link in today's episode notes and on our website. All right. Thank you again for all of your support. Now back to the news. Pretty soon, Overstock.com will become Bed Bath & Beyond. Overstock paid $21.5 million for Bed Bath & Beyond's intellectual property, and a judge just approved the deal. So starting in August, when you go to Overstock.com, you'll be redirected to BedBathAndBeyond.com. That's just about a month after the last brick-and-mortar Bed Bath & Beyond stores close in the U.S. So no, Overstock did not buy the store locations or inventory. But it got the website and domain names, trademarks, patents, customer database, loyalty program data, and more. Overstock's mobile app and rewards program will be rebranded, so the Overstock branding won't exist anymore. And eventually, Overstock says it plans to bring back Bed Bath & Beyond's popular wedding registry. The U.S. Justice Department says it's cracking down on health care fraud schemes targeting elderly and disabled people, HIV patients, pregnant women, and more. One is being called one of the largest healthcare fraud cases in the history of the DOJ. With that one, prosecutors say the leaders of a software company created a platform that let doctors and telemarketers coordinate selling medical equipment in exchange for kickbacks. They say there was a campaign that got patients to sign up for unnecessary medical equipment or prescriptions. The software would apparently generate fake Medicare order forms for doctors to sign. Then the phony reimbursement claims would get sent to Medicare and other government insurers. And that's just one example. Nearly 80 people in all were charged across 16 states, including doctors, nurses, and healthcare executives. One of the biggest pop icons in the world had to postpone her tour because of a serious health issue. Page Six was first to report Madonna was rushed to a New York City hospital after being found unresponsive. Her manager shared an update yesterday saying Madonna developed a serious bacterial infection that kept her in the intensive care unit for several days. She has since been able to leave the ICU and at last check is recovering in a regular hospital ward. Madonna was supposed to kick off her next tour in a couple of weeks with 53 shows scheduled in North America and Europe. Her manager says everything is being put on hold for now, but they'll put out new tour dates as soon as they know more. Turner Classic Movies is coming off a rough few days of layoffs and leadership changes. There's been a lot of worry about the future of the channel that's known as a place for classic films. Movie buffs and people within the film community have been tweeting about the changes with the hashtag SaveTCM. Others have been writing passionate op-eds about TCM's cultural value. Well, now TCM's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, says it has plans for the channel's future. And those plans include bringing on some of the most iconic filmmakers of our time. Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and Paul Thomas Anderson officially signed on to curate programming for TCM. And they're apparently already working on ideas, while Warner Brothers Discovery promises that it is committed to investing in TCM long term by licensing new films and bringing a wider roster to the network. Tennessee State University announced it's becoming the first historically black college or university in the country to introduce an ice hockey program. 
The new Tigers hockey program will be created in partnership with the Nashville Predators, the NHL, and the NHL's Player Association. Meanwhile, in professional hockey, the next generation of hockey stars was celebrated during last night's NHL draft. For only the second time in history, the Chicago Blackhawks had the number one pick. And as expected, they selected Connor Bedard. He's drawn comparisons to Canadian superstar Sidney Crosby. And it's possible the two players actually face each other on the NHL's opening night in October, when Chicago is scheduled to play Pittsburgh. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, a break to thank our sponsor, AG1. A friend asked me recently if I really drink AG1 as part of my morning routine since I've been talking about it here on the show, and I was happy to tell her yes, and that I really do reach for my tea or coffee less often because drinking AG1 makes me feel energized and ready to take on the day. I've also noticed improved digestion. If you haven't heard me talk about this yet, AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that can replace your multivitamin and probiotic. And it's just in one simple, drinkable habit. One scoop of AG1 mixed with water, that's it. I like to put ice and a splash of lemon juice in it, but see what works for you. And it's one of the easiest habits I've started since it makes me feel good overall, and it makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body. AG1 uses a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food-sourced nutrients. So if you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. Now back to Thing to Know Thursday. So we've already told you that the sport pickleball has become hugely popular recently, but that's apparently come with some unintended consequences. Earlier this month, the nation's largest health insurer, United Healthcare, held a conference where it talked about how it was seeing an uptick in hip replacements, knee surgeries, and other elective procedures. Well, this week, in an update, UBS Group said pickleball could be what's driving more people to get hurt. The firm looked at data from the Sports and Fitness Industry Association and various studies about the sport. And now it estimates that between $250 to $500 million in healthcare costs can be attributed to pickle injuries just so far this year. But more people will still keep jumping on the pickleball trend. UBS says it expects 22.3 million Americans to be playing pickleball before this year is out. And that about a third of those who play at least eight times a year will be injury-prone seniors. The sport apparently appeals to seniors because it is less strenuous and easier to learn than other racket sports like tennis and squash. But that doesn't necessarily make it risk-free. Of course, this doesn't take into account any benefit people may get from the physical exercise and social interaction that also comes with the game. All right, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow, starting at 4 a.m. Until then, have a great day. 